about that in one of my, my latest articles on voice. Um, so yeah, so poverty and, and lack of equipment and the ch challenges that bring are only solvable if we start giving our learners these uh, bits of equipment now and seeing how they react to that, but keep them engaged. Hopefully I'll, I'll show you a few ways to keep them engaged today. So I think I've, I've covered a lot of the questions here. Connectivity, poverty, home life, yeah. Okay, so if you have any more questions, do pop them in the chat. I'm gonna carry on now if that's okay. Um, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about the movement we find ourselves within, because this is really interesting. So before I go and talk about these tools, I want you all to know we're all part of this. We're all part of the me in media revolution. Uh, we're all now part of the UN education revolution as well. What I mean by me and media is in the 90s and the 2000s, if you wanted to watch a TV show, see a film, you went to the cinema and saw it when it was on, got it on DVD, or you showed up at the time it was on TV. Then came catch up. You know, it came iPlayer, Netflix, Love Film, Amazon Prime, and it switched the entire system on its head. Now, it wasn't a producer-centric media where the producer said, I've got this, you watch it when I say. And now it's become, here's what I've got, and the consumer is the one demanding when and where. And we're now entering that phase into, in education. And quite frankly, I think we're sleepwalking into it. Um, our learners, if they're uh, 16 and under, they were born in a world that revolves around them in terms of access to information, Suddenly we bring them into a classroom where we go back 200 years and it's on our terms and you can't fight that. You can only go with it and steer it into the right, uh, the right channels. And with the tools I'm about to show you, you can do that. Um, you can try and make learning a process where the learner requests what they want and you react to that but without increasing things like workload, stress load, and you continue to teach to the exam, as we know is quite important these days. Um, so let me go on and start talking a little bit about the tools we've got. So this is how you can digitally plan, deliver, and assess using Google Workspace. So before I sort of go in and talk about what Google Classroom can do, so that little icon at the top is Google Classroom, as you may have already seen. Um, my colleague, uh, Victoria, talks about something very interesting. She says that students using Google Classroom are, are reading your instructions. And there's an opportunity there to deliver a, a degree of teaching in the instructions you give. If you start your year using very simple words and simple terminology, simple phrasing, and then build that up and until you're using very complex technical terms, they're learning vocabulary, they're learning the right systems of thinking and speaking almost, almost by stealth. Use your instructions on Google Classroom to that effect, okay? So Google Classroom uh, is a tool uh, which kind of forms the, the real kind of crux of, of Google Workspace's um, education area. Uh, if you haven't used it, um, in effect, it's almost like having a, a web page for your students um, where you can upload documents, where they can respond to your questions, where you can embed videos and links. And you can set these classrooms up to include the TAs. You can uh, set these classrooms up to exclude certain groups of students. You want to maybe have higher levels or lower levels. You can make as many classrooms as you want. And you can cross post between them. So you're not doing any extra work by doing this. So on the planning side, what Google Classroom allows you to do um, is quite interesting. It allows you to make teacher-only classrooms. And this is really useful when you're setting up for the year because you can band together and create resource banks on certain topics. I'm really blessed to be part of a department where we've got experts in nearly every single field. And what they'll do is they'll design lesson packages around these specialist topics. So someone will do it around analyze, evaluation, creative writing, transactional writing, comparison, identify. And it lowers the workload for everyone. And it makes the resources available to be edited to suit your classroom as well. 
no more kind of having to go to a central physical bank of folder, do photocopying, you know, rub out certain words, add in certain words. Now it's all there for you already and it's easily edited. So when you're thinking about planning for the year or planning for a term, set up a teacher only classroom where you can put resources in together. OK, um, and you can embed external resources in this as well. Um, what you can do is uh, put in YouTube videos that you might find useful, links to BBC Bite Size or other revision sites, links to the um, uh, whatever exam board you're with so they can read the documents themselves. And you can schedule these learning resources as well to go out at certain times. You don't have to info dump these students. Uh, students, are, young people in general, like to have the information drip fed to them, uh, usually, usually via a screen as well. Uh, so you can do that. You can make things pop up on their phones if they download the app at certain times because this also has f functionality on their phones. They can carry around Google Classroom in their pocket and you can as teachers as well. So no more having to cart things home, having to take things back into work. It's all there for you. If you're not using Classroom and you're using just a, you know, a shared folder somewhere, let me tell you, you've got to use Classroom because it's easier for you. Okay. So when you're delivering to a group of students or an entire cohort, um, you can make these, these materials accessible um, as much as you can. You can make sure they're put onto classroom with labels. Um, they only reach certain students. You can make sure they only, um, if you tick certain boxes uh, when you're doing an assignment, they'll only trigger on certain students' account. And you can make sure they're access arrangement friendly. So you can upload documents, forms, slides, which you've manipulated to kind of uh, help a dyslexic student, for example. So rather than doing photocopying, rather than kind of showing them up in front of the class, here's your pink sheet, here's your yellow sheet, here's your, here's your whatever, they don't have to share that information they don't want to. You can just give it to them and they can be in charge of that. And it's worked really well for a lot of my shy students who do have learning difficulties. Um, in my time when I was at uh, LSA, uh, learner support, in a class, like the, the worst thing you could do was, was show a student up uh, in that way. They, they saw it as a slight. They want to be like everyone else. And Google Classrooms allows for that kind of very personal transfer of materials, which keeps that kind of um, privacy intact for that student. I think it's really valuable. Um, for the whole class, you can do Q&As, open Q&As on lesson topics. Using the uh, front page of Classroom, you can put up uh, a question and they can come in and answer it straight away. Better yet, they can ask you questions on it and you see them right away. No more waiting, no more emails, no more looking at individual things. And they can see what other students have asked as well. So it allows for a much more cohesive learning environment. Now, here's a, here's a real, really important tip. Um, make sure when you're uploading your materials, you upload them into the classwork tab and you can set topic labels for those resources by question type or assessment objective. Um, a few of my colleagues like to put all their resources up based on the assessment objective in English. Um, that way, if a student's looking for analysis help, there it is. There it is in its own area. It's clearly labeled. Uh, so I've known some uh, educators, all they'll do is they'll put up every single piece of work they've, they've produced, every single slide or every single handout and just dump them in, you know, without, without labeling them. And if you, you can't expect students to sift through that, they won't do it. If you can label it nice and clearly, you're in luck. So make sure you're labeling your resources by question and assessment objective type um, if you can, um, or, or any other method, as long as it's clear. This is quite interesting. A lot of time uh, when I'm giving students extracts to read or books to read, um, I don't know if they're reading it. Now, you can quiz their knowledge, absolutely, um, but that doesn't solve the issue in the time. You don't know if they're reading or not. What you can do with Google Classroom is you can assign the reading to each student. And you can see by just opening that resource in through Google Classroom, who's on it and who's not. So you know who's at least accessing it. And you can even make it so whenever they've read a sentence, they can move the cursor down. You can watch that happen in real time. And it's really useful to know that. No more getting out of reading. No more getting out of answering questions. You know where they all are. And if you're seeing someone struggle, you can record that easy enough. So that's delivery. Now let's think about assessment. So assessment, you can mirror time exam tasks using Classroom, using hand-in schedulers. Um, you can set a, a resource to come online uh, at you know, the start of the day and go offline at the end of the day if you want to, or even by the hour if you want to as well. Um, 
we found this out quite today and it was brilliant. Um, you can IV with colleagues by adding teachers to classrooms and adding teachers to folders. Uh, no more printing stuff off, no more filling in sheets, getting it wrong, asking for a new sheet. Digital, quick, easy. Um, and you can also encourage reflection from students in private comments and build up an experience mosaic. Um, whenever, some, whenever you set an assignment over classroom that the student engages with, they can post a comment next to it and it's just a matter of um, clicking on snipping tool and taking that comment, putting it in a mosaic just for them to see a picture so they can see how they progressed through the year. And that's really great. Being able to reflect on your own practice is, is key. Uh, OK, moving, uh, moving on now. Um, if you do have any questions, please uh, save them uh, to the end if that's OK. Uh, I'll answer them all in the big Q&A. Um, now, this is meet and chat. And we've already had a question on this. And it's pretty good. Um, so chat is a series of chat rooms, Google chat, a series of chat rooms and a, and a series of uh, personal messaging services. If you haven't used chat, I recommend looking at it. It's a lot easier to see, kind of understand it when you see it. But if you've ever used WhatsApp or Facebook Messenger, it's kind of similar to that. You can have uh, group chats with people in them. You can have uh, individuals, you can message individuals privately. And what's really good about using Google Chat to start your lesson is you can pull all students into a central chat room that they know about. Uh, and they can, you can check, you can do attendance. They just have to write their name. You can give them those initial instructions. And they can click on the word you write and click thumbs up, thumbs down. It's really, really useful. Yeah. Um, what you can do from chat then, I think someone put their mic on. Would you mind muting it for me, please? Just check your mic, thank you. Um, so what you can do um, through chat is you can actually set up meets through that and it goes straight into the chat window. So no more scheduling meets, having them come late, lose the link. Get them all into chat and use chat as your hub, okay? Use chat as your hub to go to meet. Um, that way you can always refer back to chat and look for questions because sometimes it's hard to get um, questions when people are looking at a screen. They can have it, the chat open in the second screen. It's really useful. And I found often that my meets, my video meets, last maybe 10 minutes as I introduce something, and the rest of the time we're on chat. And uh, it works really well. I'd, I'd advise using that. So for planning, you can set up chat rooms for teams and um, subject specialist areas. No more pointless, all-inclusive emails. Now, emails uh, are literally, in, in a student's mind, they're what the dinosaurs used to communicate. And, and I'm starting to think that way as well. The email is a needlessly formal, complex to set up, complex to send, time-wasting uh, experience. When you could be on Google Chat and send a message directly to who you want straight away. No need for the hello, how are you? Just there it is. A lot of um, companies now, a lot of creative uh, media companies have completely got rid of emails, apart from external contact, and are using services like chat to coordinate. And it's working really well. It's saving time. So use chat with your team to plan things. Chat is also good because you can directly show documents and folders in chat. You can just drag and drop them straight in there. Now, as any English teacher will know, um, there is a lot of documents that come with teaching our subject because we have extracts, we have books, we have reviews, we have IVs, we have, we have a lot of stuff to upload in document format. And some of these are in formats like PDFs because we've had to download them from external sites. It works really well with chat. No more saving it to your computer, finding it in a folder, doing the attached, the attachment is too big. All of it works. It's really easy. Uh, with Meets, you can record them for reference purposes and to share good practice as well. Uh, so when you uh, have your meetings with your quality departments, uh, you can bring along these recordings and say, look what we've been doing. We have physical evidence of it and it will look really great. Um, for planning, uh, pre-create chat rooms for your classes and populate them as well. Have a chat room for each class, have every single student in there and you don't have to use it straight away. They just, they can log on and see it whenever they want. Don't react, you know. Be, be proactive with it. Um, for delivery, uh, use the uh, chat response emoji, which I've talked about before, to track students paying attention. They literally click on the words you've said, give you a thumbs up if they know it. Uh, use chat as a hub, I've said that. Use, it as a, use meet as the de delivery and screen share tool like I'm doing to you now. PM students struggling. 
okay? Don't call them out in the middle of the chat. Go and directly message them, okay? Ask them how they're doing. Now, don't forget that chat and meet, if it's through your organization, is monitored, okay? It's quite safe from a safeguarding um, point of view because they can see it directly and you can send any any problematic stuff away. Make sure you do set really, really kind of important tones and important rules for the class on this on that subject. A uh, little known fact is you can type in at the at symbol and, and all, and everything you write after that, it will ping up on everyone's screen straight away. So what that does is that signals everyone. You can also do at and then student name, just to call up that, 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 that learner, and that will ping up straight away onto their screen. No more having to wait for the little notification dealing or just for them to check. It's there for them. It's like, a, it's like if you're in a class pointing at students saying, oh, Jimmy, tell me this. It brings their attention. So for assessment, you can use Meet um, for one-to-one -one or small group seminars. Uh, Meet has limited effectiveness, in my opinion, for very large groups. Um, but if you use it for small groups, maybe after you've delivered the main spiel, um, you can do really effective one-to-one -one work with individual students, and they'll open up to you on that much easier as well. And what's great about that, that's going back in time, you know, a thousand years to when we had one-to-one -one teachers as standard, and it really makes the benefit. Uh, encourage students to PM you questions about assessed work if they don't want to ask them. If they don't want to ask them in front of their peers, and then you can maybe drop it in to chat later as just an example if you think it's good. Um, so it, so it supports our shy students as well. Um, and a lot of students are feeling a lot more shy and more antisocial during this pandemic just because of the mental health. We can't force them to be more social, but we can support them and make them feel um, socially active, at least with us. Um, now, with English, a lot of people are thinking, well, how are we going to be assessing their handwriting if they're just typing everything? Well, the answer is just going to take a picture of what they wrote. And you can actually, if they send you that picture over me, you can click on it. You can draw boxes on the, on the screen about what they've done. And you can actually do comments on the handwriting there. Do handwriting exercises. It's easy. Um, you know, there's no need to have them do anything by hand unless they need to do a handwriting exercise. Um, and make sure, and if they, their handwriting is bad, get them to do more. Just take pictures. And you can give such a greater depth of comment and such a greater depth of feedback via the screen, via the comments, rather than scrolling in the margins. We, get, we have to get away from that. It's, just, it's, not, it's not working anymore. Um, so that's, that's meet and chat. So next is docs. This is Google Docs. Uh, it's basically the word analog, uh, if you ever use Microsoft. Um, for planning, uh, one thing that worked really well for us this year is we created a shared anthology, um, which uh, are all of our teaching group used together. Um, we used to just print out extracts, give them to the students on the day, um, and then they would put them in their folder, take them away, hand them back in. We can't do that because of COVID. And also it means that maybe we, as a team we're teaching different extracts. But what we did is we, we compiled all our best ones together in our planning stage using Google Docs, just copy and pasting them into there because you can share a Google Doc with all your class, with all your um, colleagues, so you can edit it all together. Okay, It's not like you're downloading, changing it, uploading. With Google Docs, what you're doing is you're all seeing the same document live. So we just copy and paste it, uh, extracts we liked in there all together. Um, and we produce like, a, I think there's a 50 page document of really good extracts. And you can do that too. It saves a lot of time and it brings the team together and it makes the education far more focused. Um, so, and you can also then share that anthology onto your Google Classroom where your students can get at it. Um, but we did print them out, and we have hard copies they get to keep, which also works. There's no reason you still can't print this stuff out if you don't want to. And it does help kids with the reading skills as well. Something we've done over the last couple of years as well, uh, we've taken all the past papers that Edexcel provide to us, and we convert them into docs, doc formats. This allows students um, to basically click on it, make a copy for themselves, fill it in, and then hand it in straight away, as easy as that. So no more downloading it, printing it off, writing it by hand and handing it into us. Now they can just do it. And the advantage there is they can, we can give good comments back to them. Uh, if you highlight a piece of text in docs, a little button should come up on the right hand side, a little gray speech bubble. You click on that, you can leave a comment for your students in great detail, even embed videos, links to websites that might help them. No more scruffy margins. Um, and I, yeah, so yeah, use the comment tools. Um, 
and we can also use them to question our colleagues as well if we have any um, queries, which is quite useful. Rather than just ask them, email them, we can just do it there and then. Um, we can also prepare documents, as I said before, that are accessible to students with disabilities. Have some templates ready to go, um, you know, with larger font, different font, different background color. Uh, and you can share them as well. And you can even share them if you have uh, Google Workspaces in, as an organization. You can share them with your learning support departments. Ask what they think. There's no reason you can't be communicating cross-departmentally cross with Google Workspace. Now, when you're delivering using Docs, set key expectations on document format. Uh, so what font uh, do you want? What, uh, what size font? Uh, where are your margins? You would, you, in, in a classroom handwriting, you would ask them to write the title and date. You would ask them to stay within the margins. You would you'd reprimand them if they, uh, if they wrote wonkily. But it's the same thing on a doc. Have that same energy, and it will work. Um, if you want them to um, work on a piece of, of, um, of writing, but you want to make sure they're working on it and not just you know, naffing around on the phone, um, you can um, you can set like an instruction book uh, to non-editable, so they can't actually directly edit anything you give them. Um, but you can see who's accessing it as well. If they want to make their own copy to annotate on, fine, you can file make a copy. But use the edit edit tools, um, the edit, edit permissions, I should say, to make sure they can't just go and change stuff. And also do that for your other colleagues as well, because um, you can change your colleagues' work, and it is a big deal. Make a copy first. Always works. Um, and create templates. Um, many uh, many people will go on to the create a template when you open when you click on docs. It will say do you want a blank document or a template. You can make your own template. Um, so if you like to do your book reports in a certain way, make a template. Easy. Um, once again, it is all about assessment. It's all about embedding helpful data in the comments you give. Okay. As I said before, highlight the text the student has made. Click the comments button and write in that. Okay, give them as much information as you can. Now, what you can also do is you can um, do a suggestions as well. And on the top bar, you'll see a little um, sort of a quill and a paper icon. That I'll click on that. It gives you three options: it gives you edit, uh, gives you again, gives you comments, and I think it just gives you and it gives you non-editable. Those first two comments, uh, commenting or suggestions and, and edits. Edits take whatever they've done and replace it with what you've done. Whereas comments show them what you want to do in green, and they can then change it to meet your expectations. Um, I like to just uh, I like to edit most of the time, but I always do it in different font. But it really is up to you. Um, take note of the last edited timestamps. Look at how long they've actually spent uh, on this piece of work, uh, which is also which is good. Um, Show uh, good examples. Yeah, the replace function, the edit function. Show good examples via that. By all means, write up your own stuff. And lastly, assess as they go. Um, we're, as we're teaching digitally now, um, even in the classroom, if they're on, if on laptops, no more looking over their shoulder. Makes them feel pretty awkward. And uh, they tend to slow down. If, the, if you start looking over their shoulder, they get a bit nervous. What you can do now is you can just click on the document assignment they're doing, and you can see them working live. And most of the time, they don't even notice you're there. Uh, and you can just either give them verbal feedback or you can make comments as they go. And they tend I've found that a lot of them have, have spoke quite highly of just me giving them comments on the document, very clear, very concise. Don't like, no longer have to remember my verbal instructions or refer to a little scribble note in the margin. It just doesn't work. So Docs is fantastic for giving feedback. It's brilliant. Okay, moving on. What time are we on? We've got 15 odd minutes left. A couple more things I want to show you. Okay, so slides. This is, your, this is your Microsoft PowerPoint replacement, uh, and it's better in pretty much every single way. Doesn't use as many computer resources, so if you're on a slow computer, you know you don't have to worry about it kind of shutting down or taking five minutes to load. Really quick to load. Um, has the same functionality as um, PowerPoint. You can do everything in PowerPoint. You can pretty much do it in slides in some way or another. And if you can't, there's probably an add-on you can download to help you do that. Um, like everything on Google Workspace, it's instantly shareable. Uh, with all your all your students and all the rest of the staff. You can set edit permissions so people can't change it or people can change it if you want them to or you can refer to those edits at some point and take suggestions. If they want it, they can make a copy of it, do their own thing. Often uh, it's really good for cover because no more having to upload, download PowerPoints. That may not work. Now it's just slides. There it is. One second. Click copy, send. Click share, send. Done. In planning. 
Um, you can use um, hyperlinking within slides. And you can do this in PowerPoint, by the way, but you can do it in slides. You can actually insert uh, links to other websites and you can, and people can, and it, Google usually recognizes it as a link, then click that, go straight to the website. Now, the issue with power, that PowerPoint has with this is it automatically tries to open Internet Explorer, which you may not have, and doesn't Internet Explorer doesn't work very well. It may just moan at you. You've got to do a control click as well. This, it's Google, works on Chrome, click, there you are. There's your link. Easy as that. And you can even, if you, um, if you, if you kind of uh, highlight the stuff, right click it, uh, there's an option there that allows you to kind of turn that link into text, but it remains blue so they can click on it. A lot of my slides are interactive that way. Um, so you can also create uh, individual slides separately, uh, which are just um, tasks, which you can share amongst your fellows and they can input into their own slideshows as well. So you make extension tasks ready to go, ready to copy, um, rather than a central link you have to get a bit messy with if you're using PowerPoint. Uh, however, I would say this, agree and stick to a labeling format, okay? Uh, make sure that whatever you're calling your slides for that week matches what someone else is going to call them for that week so you don't get them confused. Um, even if it's just your names and then the topic. So, you know, Jane's analysis or whatever you want to do. Um, in terms of delivery, um, get the learners to do the work. goes back to hyperlinks. Um, give them the link to the answer. Get them to find it and tell you, Yeah. Um, there's no reason we have to be chalk and talking anymore. Um, even with this pandemic where we, we, you know, students can't really work together as closely as we like, they can still research. It's still an IT skill. Um, the current framework of assessment that Ofsted are putting out uh, really emphasizes, are we increasing the digital, their IT skills? If you do this, you are. Um, make sure these slides are accessible um, with, uh, with the option for no teacher input to maximize personal study time. Now, what I mean by this is, the learner misses a lesson because they're isolating or misses a lesson because they couldn't get in or whatever or their internet was down. Make sure they can open those slides and go, I see what teacher wants me to do here. I'll do that easy. Um, otherwise, you'll get messages and questions. And we want to try and avoid that unless those questions are valid. Um, so they can feel, you know, they're real, they're, they'll feel like they're, they've earned that knowledge. Um, import your tracking data from a shared sheet um, to share class progress without fiddly copy paste. Um, sh uh, Slides has a like option just to insert another another Google document easy, or you can make your own table and just copy and paste. Uh, a bit different from how uh, PowerPoint does it, though. You know, it's a it's a similar thing, but there's no need to have multiple documents open. Is what I'm saying. Just put everything in the slide. Um, when you come to assess, make sure that your slides are written in technical English terminology. Um, so make sure you're saying assessment objective X or analyze skill. Um, make sure it's always challenging them to learn these things so they know what's going on. A bit like teaching a modern foreign language. Um, you want to be using as much of that language as you can. Make sure your slides reflect that, okay, when you do use words. Um, encourage your learners to then peer assess via uh, shared slides. Um, we're going to lose a lot of that student-on-student that -student interaction. Uh, but there's no reason that you can't have a slide, uh, make, get them to make a slide, share it with their peers, share it with you, and watch them interact via slides, putting up ideas, treating it as kind of a, uh, a shared project. No reason you can't do that. We're going we're to lose the ability to have posters in the classroom. There's no reason they can't group together and make a slide um, to do that. Um, also consider image-focused slides for creative writing. Um, I love to have lots of different slides with little starter sentences on them, and they can go through it like a picture book. No more black and white, uh, twice photocopied little picture of a, of a man on a swing or something for their creative writing inspiration. That's going to inspire no one. Get your own images, put them on slides, have them there to go. Um, and you can also embed in music and videos. You can do a completely music-focused creative writing piece. What does it make them feel? And, you know, that, that also ties into their mental health as well. See what makes them tick. And so that's slides. Uh, so lastly, I'm going to talk about something you may not have heard of called forms. Google Forms, this isn't like um, the form you would find in an Excel spreadsheet. It's not like a database. It is, uh, in essence, a quiz app builder application. And it is so useful for assessments. Uh, once again, it's in Google Workspace. It's a little purple icon. Um, go and find it. Have a play around with it. A little bit complex to learn, 
And what I'd recommend if you really want to learn more than what I'm telling you about these things is go and do Google for Education Level 1. It's only 10, uh, 10 pounds from Google and uh, it's a recognized qualification. Also, a lot of the times that your, uh, your quality department will pay for it as well uh, if you're a Google Educator School and push for it as well. It's, it's, it's worth getting. I learned so much on my course about these programs and it, it benefited me. And one of those things that benefited me was forms. Because when you're planning with forms, um, you can actually create skills gap quizzes for your colleagues uh, with no names attached. And they can fill them in. Um, don't have to collect emails or anything. You, they can fill them in and let, and let you know and let each other know what they don't find as, uh, as easy. So if you've got a member of staff who's, who's not particularly confident on evaluation, well, great. Now they don't have to tell someone. They don't have to admit to that if they feel a bit shy or they work remotely. Now you know it. You can put on some CPD for everyone. Um, it allows you to analyze data very quickly. Uh, the results can be exported into a sheet, which can be turned into an Excel document if you're still, unfortunately, um, using Microsoft. Um, and you can make these quizzes. Uh, you can copy these quizzes as well to each other. So if I make a quiz about analysis, my colleague can click it, file, make a copy, and then they have their own copy. One thing I will say about forms do not um, submit someone else's form to your students because they're, all your students' results will go to them. You've got to make your own copy. Uh, in terms of delivery, forms allows you to create exit tickets really quickly. One thing I really miss from the kind of um, from the days before COVID is I would stand in the doorway and ask all my students a question about what they learned, and that was uh, and that was great because it forced them to actually listen to me, um, which is always nice. Anyway, um, create these exit tickets. Uh, forms really quickly, five minutes before the end of the lesson, push them out via classroom to their phones, and then they have to answer that. Uh, it's great, um, and, and they love a little bit of competition, um, especially when you know, I teach in FE. Um, I sometimes teach sport lads, and the sports students are very competitive, and it's great to engage them on that competitive level. Um, they love that. Some, some students don't like to, and the, the option there is just make it anonymous so they can't see each other's results. Uh, but reverse the roles. Make Have your learners make each other quizzes as well. Um, why not? Uh, test each other's knowledge. And they'll love that little creative aspect of it. Um, you can also self-contain them like you would do with your slides. You can make them uh, doable with that teacher support. Link them to slides. Link them to websites. Make them clear instructions. You can also, which is really good, and I'll go to assessment now, you can make it so any answer they give comes with a, uh, a pre-written bit of assessment. You can make these forms self-mark. Um, so you know more market. If you can uh, code, you can just write in what you expect that what you expect their answer to be. If they get it right or within a margin, there you are. There's your point. Um, and you can also turn on lock mode if you have Chromebooks uh, available to your students that are on the college network or the school network. You can make it so these uh, they can't open up the tabs while they're doing the quiz, and that really helps as well. Um, so, last but not least is Jamboard. Now, Jamboard is one of the things which not many people know about at all. Um, and it's really useful. Um, it's quite, if you ever use Padlet, it's quite similar to Padlet with the added benefit of uh, saving all your results to uh, drive automatically so you can share them. Um, what it is, and, and go over play with it yourself if you get a chance, it's available on um, Google Workspace at school and it's also available uh, on the personal account as well. It acts as kind of a, a virtual wall where they can stick up sticky notes, do drawings, and treat it like a, a virtual whiteboard. Uh, and it's easy to use in slides as well in this case. Um, and you can also do it. It's also a way you can do it. If you go into settings, I believe, you can also share a Jamboard straight away from Meet as well, which is quite, which is quite practical. Um, in planning, um, you can create sounding boards so all members of staff can add in their opinions and questions and ideas. And it's great for NQTs because sometimes NQTs feel a little bit nervous about maybe voicing an opinion about what we should be doing. They can now put it on a Jamboard. Uh, use it in conjunction with a Meet to record minutes in an active format. And make sure there's loads of blank Jamboards ready that are topic uh, specific for quick sharing. I like to have um, templated Jamboards, like you know, crossed out into into uh, a set of four squares, so they can put different answers in areas. I like to make different columns, so we can have an element of teamwork come in. And when you're delivering, um, you can get them when they write to write in certain colours or use certain sticky notes in certain colours, so you can have team play. Um, and also, you can maybe code it to language and structure features as well, or different terminologies. Uh, replace board word uh, board words with Jamboard work. 
um, make sure your jam board is there for group use. Uh, you can lock finished boards. You can make it so they're not editable anymore and let your students make copies of them so they can keep the notes. No more erasing important stuff from the board that some students haven't got. It's all there now. Um, you can make assessment objective um, or feature-specific blank boards. So you can do an entire board based on emotive language, and they can fill those with images, tips, quotes. Um, no need to kind of um, see them individually. They can all work together. And um, you can create community between different ability groups by sharing finished jam boards across different classrooms. So when you come to assess them all, they can see what different levels are being assessed at. And often this kind of motivates some students to do more. And sometimes um, even a high level group will learn something from a low level group as well. And the jam board just allows you to share that whiteboard. Um, and it's so useful. Okay, so that brings me kind of to the end of kind of my feature spiel. Um, I'm gonna open up to Q&A now. I think we have just about 10 minutes left. Um, so it'd be really, really great to hear from you. Um, so do we have any questions at all? Okay, here we go. We've got some already. You, you, you have two minutes left. I have two minutes left. I'm going to get two Mr. minutes left. That will allow people to leave your session and then move on to their next session. Okay. So All right. So. Time to, get, uh, to thank you. So while you're looking at those questions, uh, I will thank you, Josh, for what can only be described as a very impassioned and uh, highly motivating uh, delivery. Uh, so thank you, Wayne. Thank, thank right. you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you so uh, much. Thank you for setting this up, Wayne, as well. It's been great. That's that's not a problem. I uh, thoroughly enjoyed it. It was a really good session. And I, th and I can see by the questions that are on there that it has created a lot of thought and, and a lot of um, dis discussion around that. And if you are struggling with any of those issues that, that Josh has raised, then uh, discussion with issues, I, I sound like uh, one of those <laughs> after, after Wayne, the, the BBC, then do get in touch. Wayne? Yes. Is just going to be able to answer some of the questions. Sorry, yes, go ahead. Okay, thanks. <laughs> um, I'll just say this as well. Uh, Wayne, you'll have to show me how to do this, but I'd like to make my slideshow available to everyone at some point. So um, yeah, I've already shared it with you, Wayne, so if you'd like to download it and and, uh, and share it to everyone in the way that's best possible, that'd be I great. Do. Um, so I'll start with Jamie. Uh, does this lead us further in seeing students as consumers in a marketplace? Are we beyond changing, changing or changing this? Um, the marketplace is still evolving. Um, I think we haven't seen even 10% of what tools are going to come out soon. Um, they are very much consumers of a product, but they're going to be driving what the products do. Um, so, okay, so Petra, so how do you use PM in chat? Um, so if you're in chat, let me see if I can open up. I, I, I can't open a chat window and show you because unfortunately there's lots of sensitive information from students and that, that comes up automatically. But if you can imagine the chat window um, in Google Chat, and the top left, you're going to see like add people's bots and rooms as a little search. Search for your student there, click on that, and it opens a one to one dialogue uh, with you there. So that should work. Um, Got it, it, thanks. Nice one. Excellent. Glad that worked. Some, um, by the way, some sort of organizations may restrict that. So if I ever say something you can't do it, it's worth checking with whoever's your Google person uh, just to make sure you can. Um, okay, Melanie Gibson has said, oh, Melanie's kind of answered that question. Lovely. Thank you, Mel. Um, yeah, okay, you've all said Jamboard, how do you type? So on the left-hand side, you're going to see uh, loads of different options. I love to use the, uh, the post-it note, sticky note option. It should be in the middle. It's a little square box. You click on that, gives you a bunch of options, and you can, you can then do a little um, post-it note. There's also a text box you can draw as well, um, so that also works too. Uh, hopefully that works for you as well, uh, Petra. Uh, Helen, thank you so much. Uh, and Mel, last question here. What level of online engagement from students has the college enjoyed so far? Do we have the data to measure this? Uh, our data from last year, Mel Elite, because we, when we had to kind of close up shop pretty early, is that in English and maths, our attendance was around 71% uh, in comparison to a lot of other departments, which was, which was lower. Um, because we pushed the chat aspect, we pushed the meetup aspect, we pushed uh, communicating with our students. Um, we won't know the level of true engagement until the end of the year. That's the truth. We will not know. Um, and I don't think we're going to know the true impact of it for another two until we've seen a couple of a couple of years. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you very much. That's really kind. Um, oh, you've, hurt, you've hurt his feelings now, Petra. Look at him. He's gone. He's gone off the, gone off the camera to have a little cry. 
guaranteed. Uh, you're welcome, Melanie. You're welcome. Um, but yeah, so please, um, if you get access to my slideshow, which Wayne's, oh, there he is. Wayne's back now. Um, so if you can get access to my slideshow, um, I'll leave it on for a second as I'm saying this. I have a few ways you can contact me. Do, 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 do. There it is. Um, I'll leave this on here if you want to take like a screen grab of this. Um, so if you're interested in finding out more about tech and how it's affecting the educational environment, I've got two articles right now on voice uh, worth a read. Uh, hopefully they can inform. Uh, send me an email anytime you like. Uh, I don't tend to check them when I'm not in college because uh, emails are dinosauric and for the prehistoric age. Uh, and you can watch my videos at YouTube, uh, Josh Educates, all one word, and uh, hopefully that's useful. But um, yeah, it's been great to talk to you all. Hopefully you've learned something. Um, and yeah, please send me any questions. And Wayne, again, thank you so much for organizing this. I'm going to hang up and that's me.